it's decred When solving disputes, it's the best You got an issue, forget about the rest DCR, ain't no holding it back Now miners can't fork or go totally mad You see the powers with the holders and the total you have The more coins that you own, the more votes you can cast The debate's over, I hope you're ready for a takeover It's self-funded and managed by the stakeholders The funds come from 10% of every block reward So tell them other cryptocurrencies to lock the doors With all the drama, sometimes it's like the game broken That's why the cred measures up with such a great token The first crypto with binding on-chain voting And that's music to my ears like Beethoven Make sure you do your own research for the info And welcome to the best community in crypto Okay, welcome to the Decred Roundtable episode 5. So I hope you guys like the new intro music. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it's done by a rapper named Crypto Wrap Up. If you haven't heard his weekly YouTube cryptocurrency raps, check them out. Just search Crypto Wrap Up on YouTube and you'll find them. I reached out to him a couple weeks ago to see if he would make an intro rap for this show and it turned out amazing. So you'll probably be hearing it in other places as well. But on today's show, we've got a, a great show lined up for you all about grassroots marketing. So updating the community on all of the events that Decred has been hosting or attending, you know, the conferences, the launch parties, the meetups. And then we also have quite a bit of discussion on how to become a marketing contractor for Decred. So if that interests you, stay tuned. First up though, I wanted to take a look at some Decred social media statistics that will help put today's uh, conversations into context. So the graph that you're looking at shows the growth of Decred's Twitter, Reddit, and Facebook followers. So our Facebook page is fairly new. Uh, you'll see that it's just a little green line in the corner, but Twitter and Reddit are much more mature communities. So Reddit subscribers are represented by the blue line and Twitter followers are represented by the black line. Now I did wanna point out uh, this weird deviation in the Twitter followers trend line. And I think that was caused by a bunch of bots following the Twitter account and then subsequently unfollowing it. So I would just ignore that, that weird deviation deviation. Um, so the numbers that I did want to highlight are Decred's Twitter and Reddit growth rates over the past three months and the past month. So for Twitter, over the past month, we've had a 25% increase in followers. And then over the past three months, a 83% increase in followers. And then for Reddit, in the, over the past month, we've had a 26% increase in the number of uh, Decred Reddit subscribers, and then over the past three months, we've seen a 59% increase in the number of subscribers. Now, correlation is not causation, which means that we can't be 100% sure what is actually driving the growth of these uh, social media accounts, but I think we can make some fairly reasonable assumptions that all of these events that we've been attending and hosting have been having a positive impact. So let's dive into what events I'm actually talking about. First up is the Blockchain Expo North America. So this was a conference that Jake, Jay-Z, Trace, and myself attended at the end of November in Santa Clara, California. And it was a two-day event that had over 300 companies participating and over 10,000 people in attendance. So Decred got a lot of great exposure. On day one, Jake gave a talk about Plitea and some of its different use cases. And then he was also featured in a panel on day two about the future of blockchains. So Jay-Z, Trace, and myself, we held down the Decred booth for most of the conference, which was constantly packed with people. And throughout the conference, Jake ended up giving, I think, six or seven interviews. Jay-Z gave a couple, I gave one, and Decred was also featured in a cryptocurrency documentary that was being filmed. So overall, a whole lot of fun and a whole lot of exposure. The weekend after the Blockchain Expo, Decred had a launch party at the North Door in Austin, Texas to celebrate the release of Plitea and to promote the Plitea Challenge. So for those of you who are not aware, Plitea is the open source software that we'll be using to power the Decred proposal system. And the Plitea Challenge is a contest that we're running right now to promote the different things that Plitea can be used for besides the Decred proposal system. So if you're interested in how Plitea works or what other use cases it may have, check out episode four of the Decred Roundtable. We get into all of those details. So going back to the launch party, you had Decred devs there like Marco Pairboom, CTO of Company Zero, and the infamous Dave C, Decred's lead developer. So Marco gave a presentation where he talks about Plitea and the Plitea Challenge, and he walks the audience through how Plitea could be used for uh, or used in a bug bounty program. So you can find a video of the full presentation on the Decred YouTube channel. Check it out. I'll link to it in the show notes. 
Up next, we have an interview with Joshua, the man behind the Australian Community Launch Event and the South Korean FinTech Conference. So we we go into details of those two events, and then we also get into some topics like how did he become a Decred contractor and what steps would he recommend other people follow if they want to become Decred marketing contractors as well. All right, joining me now is Joshua from Australia. So Joshua is a Decred contractor. He works on community events and as well as business development and partnerships. So welcome, Joshua. Thanks for joining us. Hello for uh, having me again. And thanks for having me again, sorry. <laughs> so you recently ha um, have attended two events, one that you put on yourself and one was a conference. So the one that you hosted yourself was an Australian a kind of a Decred launch event. Did you want to tell us a little bit more about what that was and what your motivations behind it were? Sure. Yeah, so the one in Australia was more of a um, general community event. Um, we just had a gathering of people. Uh, food and beverage was there for the night. Uh, we got a whole bunch of Decred swag. So you may have seen some of the, uh, the custom Stakey stickers produced uh, just for Australia. Uh, we had T-shirts, and then I ran people through a presentation. And so that was just covering sort of uh, the key core elements of the project, um, how people can get involved, how all the different mechanisms work, um, but then more importantly, sort of how they can store and actually use their coins and how to uh, participate in the stakeholder governance process. Um, so that one was- and What kind of turnout was there? Uh, we had around 70 people. Uh, we had about 100 uh, RSVP and around 70 uh, 60 to 70 actually attend. Uh, so it was um, a pretty full room, uh, and there was a lot of discussion at the end. Uh, my favorite part is always the uh, the Q and A actually. So uh, that went on for uh, probably just as long as the presentation itself, which was about 45 or so minutes. So that was nice. Oh wow! So people were very interested. Yeah. So yeah. the other event that you went to was a conference called Inside Find. Uh, fintech and that was in South Korea but before we get into that I wanted to kind of dive down a little bit more into the process that you went through to host this event in Australia um you know yeah. this is something that you just decided you wanted to do on your own and so what steps did you take to actually do it if somebody wanted to reproduce these steps somewhere else in the world how would they do it yeah I mean I think the first thing is just to get involved in the slack right um, Anyone looking to contribute to the project, uh, sort of the, the the number one piece of advice is get involved in the sort of the online community. So whether it be Slack, whether it be uh, the Reddit forums, uh, or now we're set up on Discord and I believe Riot Chat as well. Um, that's probably the best point of reference. So you can sort of get in there, start um, speaking with some of the people, and probably more specifically in this context, you'd get involved in the marketing channels. Uh, so on the Slack, we've got a, a marketing channel uh, set up specifically for that. And then you just sort of start, uh, gauge, some, gauge the interest, you know, mention that, hey, you see an opportunity for us to hold an event in X city. Um, and then sort of see whether some of the other community uh, um, members are, are on board and excited to see it. And uh, from there, you can sort of start making the more formal arrangements. So try to lock down a venue. Um, set up an event page, engage some interest to make sure that you can hit those uh, quotas. You know, you, you want to make sure there's no point uh, putting on an event if nobody's going to show up. Um, and then I think start making some arrangements uh, for giveaways. So um, in this particular case, I was liaising with um, community member Listoza. So um, he, he's Stakey's original creator. Uh, so we, uh, he was kind enough to mock up a um, custom Stakey Dundee sticker uh, where it had uh, Crocodile Dundee done up as Stakey. And uh, he said, that's not a fork. Uh, so it was sort of in reference to that. Uh, that's not a nice comment. Yeah. A little bit cheesy, but very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah love it. Cheesy is okay. When you're choosing a venue, um, what type of venue did you choose? Is it something that you booked and paid for? Did you get a startup to host you? Yeah, good question. So in this case, we actually got quite lucky. Um, so a, an organization called uh, YBF uh, in Australia were kind enough to sort of lend support. Uh, so they gave us their venue. They also supplied food and beverage for the night. Uh, YBF are a local sort of startup uh, hub, incubator, and venture fund. 
uh, and they're big supporter of the uh, supporters of the the project. So actually, that particular event, I was trying to test the waters to see whether uh, there's appetite for us to establish some sort of formal decred hub over here at some stage. Um, but yeah, so we we were we were fortunate enough to get their support, um, and in fact, we we've been working to put on similar events in other cities and we've sort of had a similar response from a handful of other um a handful of other similar type companies where they'll they'll be willing to sort of lend you some space because uh, a lot of them are trying to get involved with this space and trying to encourage community in interests so a lot of the times you can get people to to uh, lend you a free venue for or sponsor you a venue for the night Absolutely. So if you're out there and you're thinking that it would be good to put host one of these events in your city, check out any local startup incubators, startup hubs. Those are great resources to reach out to, and they're usually very receptive. Now, as far as um, providing food and drinks and the giveaways, is this something that you paid for? Were you able to get funding to de from Decred? How did that work? Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to get funding from Decred. So uh, Decred were kind enough to sponsor the, the uh the swag giveaways, so the t-shirts for the night, the stickers, uh, we had a whole bunch of flyers and um, informational cards um, arranged for the event. So that was all sponsored um, and, and provided for from the Decred Holdings Group. Um, now, if people are looking to obtain funding for their events, uh, again, I can't stress the importance enough of getting involved in the communities um generally sort of getting funding from the the um the project itself is a matter of establishing trust um but also establishing uh confidence in your ability to deliver so the project is very much action focused um people just need to understand that there are a lot of people uh that try to sort of come in and they they talk a lot but then don't end up delivering on their promises. So because of that, generally the community sort of has to be a little bit conservative. Um, and uh, generally people need to sort of build up a reputation uh, before they're able to get that funding. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's one thing that we don't want people to do is just, you know, come into the Decred Slack and immediately ask for money, like when, when nobody knows who you are. So you may have to, you know, host an event or two to kind of build up your reputation and show that you actually are serious. You're not just yeah. trying to get Decred to give you money um, and, you know, gain the trust of, of the marketing channel. But yeah, once you do that, actually. then getting funding like this for, for different types of events is a, a possibility. Correct. And also on that note, I mean, so what I did is because I hadn't really um, uh, ran any events prior uh, to that for Decred, um, but, you know, I'd been pretty active in the community for a while. Um, and I'd mentioned, you know, I'd, I'd ran similar events like this before. Um, so I also run the Blockchain Melbourne uh, Meetup community. So, I, you know, I do, I do these events quite often. Um, and then in my case, I paid for everything up front with my own money. And then, so here's the other really critical part. If you're going to be pulling off any uh, endeavors for the Decred project, just make sure that you keep a, a store of all the different receipts and everything is really well documented because that'll really help you when you go to sort of get reimbursed um, for the different, um, different community events that you do choose to, to go and um, pursue. Great. So let's dive a little bit into the Inside fi uh, FinTech Conference that was in South Korea. One, how did you even get involved with this at all? You're, you're from Australia. How did this happen? Yeah, so uh, it was actually I was reached out to by the Decred Digest. Uh, and so uh, he reached out to me on uh, the Slack channel and just mentioned that uh, a handful of Korean community members um, were expressing interest in having Decred represented at the Inside FinTech conference. Um, that sort of mentioned that this particular conference, while it is a FinTech one, it tends to have quite a bit of uh, a cryptocurrency and blockchain focus, and they were not wrong. So um, Roger Ver actually attended the one last year. Uh, and so they just wanted someone who was relatively close by, that had experience sort of uh, um, running events and attending these kind of things. Uh, and so I said, yeah, I'm more than happy to attend. 
um, and it just happened to fit within my schedule. So uh, we started organizing that. Um, and we were actually hoping to do a community event over there uh, during the conference, uh, conference sorry. But uh, it was a little bit condensed, so we're going to delay that. Probably, hopefully, pick up that um, that community event sometime in January, or February. So I think one thing that people are interested in hearing is, you know, how these decred contractors became contractors. So they, can, if they want to do it themselves, they can follow a similar path. So could you tell us a little bit about how you became a decred contractor? Sure. Yeah. I mean. So I guess the first step in the journey is being off known in the community. So, you know, it's just interacting with people. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be uh, contributing in any way, but just sort of asking questions and demonstrating, the, demonstrating an understanding of the project or at the very least a willingness to or a desire to actually understand the project at a deeper level. Um, so that's probably the first step. Uh, and then the second step is, is you know, um, demonstrating um, a philosophy of action as opposed to words. Um, and you know that might that might involve just pulling off a handful of small things for the project. Um, it may just also involve you pitching into certain discussions, right? And and you know, there's a lot of problem solving that happens within the community. Um, and I think that's always a good good place to start uh, on your pathway to be, towards becoming a contractor. Um, and then you know the next the next steps are generally you you'll probably find yourself reached out to, and if not, just suggest sort of interesting initiatives that you'd like to see done. And that's the thing, right? Is is once it's up on the Trello board, um, or it's it's mentioned within some of the marketing channels. You'll generally find that a lot of other um, our community members and contributors will begin to pitch in. They'll start discussing it, and you can sort of get a good gauge of the interest uh, there. So you sort of can determine from that whether or not people, the community members, want to see the the particular initiative take place. Um, that's generally the best sort of the place to start. Yeah. So kind of just to summarize, first step, get on the Slack, start interacting with people, and really learn you know, where you might be able to add value in the project. And then the next step would actually be coming up with a way on your own to add value and then kind of proposing it yourself. right? Don't wait for somebody to ask you, hey, can you do this? If you see you know, an area that you think you could add value, come up with um, you know, whether a, a kind of a proposition and then just post it in the marketing channel and be like, hey, I'm planning on doing this. Does this sound like a good idea? And people will be able to give you some, some guidance and direction of, yeah, go ahead and pursue that or no, we probably shouldn't like do whatever yeah. that is. So um, and then you'll actually be able to yeah, yeah. jump in well, and start doing it. So we, we want a culture of, of people that take the initiative and doers. Correct. Correct. Um, and, and that's the thing, right? That's what separates it is, is it's, is it's often tough for people to sort of wrap their head around that yeah, because there aren't many circumstances in, in which if you want to see something change, you can literally just get up and change it. Um, and I think that's very much how the Decred project uh, functions, right? You see a lot of people that come into the community and they complain about this, they complain about that, um, but they're not willing themselves to just get up and actually try to change it. Or try to work with band with a, a handful of other community members to change it. You know, that's the other thing, right? Is never feel like you're you're there alone, or you have to do everything on your own. You can absolutely brand, um, band together with a handful of other uh, community members, and then sort of gauge interest on whatever particular initiative that you guys want to pull off. Um, and I think you'll find that more often than not, if it's something that actually would benefit the project, there's going to be a lot of support behind it. And you know it's not going to be difficult for you to get project from the sorry uh, support from the project directly either. Um, so that's the thing, right? Is it's just making yourself known and um, having the motivation to just get up and, and change the things that you you see could be better, improved, um, need to be fixed, you know, wh whatever it may be. 
Absolutely. Time to join us today, Joshua, and talking about uh, the meetups you hosted and the, the uh, FinTech conference that you attended. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you very much, Lou. And thanks for uh, having me on again. Looking forward to the next one. Up next, we have an interview with community coordinator Hayon about blockchain meetups. So joining me right now is Noah. You may know him as Slack user Hayon, and he recently wrote a blog post about or titled The Truth About, about Blockchain Meetups. So before diving into that, um, can you tell us a little bit about your involvement with the project, Noah? Yeah, definitely. So um, I started actively researching blockchain just towards the end of my university degree. I uh, had a major in uh, political science, and I studied all sorts of uh, governance systems, how, uh, how groups uh, make decisions together. And um, early on, I was already introduced to Bitcoin because a few of my friends started mining Bitcoin and, uh, and Litecoin as well, Dogecoin in, in those days. And um, I, I didn't really jump into the cryptocurrency uh, back then because the projects were so messy and uh, it was basically uh, everyone screws everyone mentality. And I didn't like that at all. And uh, towards the end of my studies, I, I realized that the government is not really the, uh, the actor that will, that will bring about change. They are uh, more about keeping the status quo. So I started really researching uh, blockchains and uh, that's when I discovered Decred, the end of uh, 2015. And uh, early 2016, I was one of the airdrop participants. So um, that, that's when I really got started uh, with Decred and started actively uh, um, communicating with Decred community members on the forum uh, back in those early days. So, so you've been following uh, the project since the inception. You, know, you yeah. were one of the rare airdrop participants. Yes, yes, that, that's right. So what's your role with the project now? Yeah, so right now, I guess the best way to describe my role is a community coordinator. So it means that I am active on all the different social media platforms that we have, all the different chat platforms that we, uh, that we are on. So Discord, Telegram, uh, Matrix, Rocket Chat, um, and Slack. Uh, and, and even Reddit and Twitter and Facebook. So I really try to keep the community together to stimulate the uh, conversations, uh, help people if they have questions with their wallet or general questions about uh, Decred. So really, yeah, trying to keep the community together, uh, keep everyone positive, keep everyone motivated. And uh, I, I help with uh, recruitment of new uh, new members as well. So if there are developers who would like to join the project, um, I'm often the first point of uh, contact with them. Okay, so if there are some developers out there listening right now and they want to join the uh, the project, how what's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, so um, you can approach me on Telegram or LinkedIn, and we also have an angel.co uh, page where you can apply directly uh, for a job. But right now, our only listing on, on angel.co is for uh, Go developers. Um, but if you are interested in any other way, just uh, write that in your introduction message and I will get back to you. I, I have to say that life is pretty crazy and, and, and busy right now. So uh, I don't have a ton of time to, uh, to walk you through the process, but I will send you the links that you need to get started. Because we really like self-starters, you know, people that can solve projects and uh, that, that can uh, solve challenges independently. Um, so we are really looking for those developers that uh, can get started for, yeah, based on their own motivation. Um, so yeah, if, if you are interested, definitely come and talk to me on, uh, on social media, Twitter, Telegram, LinkedIn, yeah. Great. Uh, and I'll include uh, links for your contact information in the show description. So if you're interested in that, just check out the show description. So Absolutely. moving on a little bit, let's dive into your blog post. Okay, so you went to these meetups all over the Netherlands um, yeah. and wrote a blog post about it. So first, what type of meetups were these? Were these Bitcoin meetups, cryptocurrency meetups, general blockchain meetups? Yeah. Um, so I would say that most of them were rather focused on blockchains rather than Bitcoin. Although some of them had Bitcoin in their, in their titles. For example, one of them was called Bitcoin and its development. Uh, but in general, you saw that people are mostly interested in blockchains. Uh, and um, most of the projects also had different perspectives, um, different projects that 
use the blockchain in, in, in their system in some way. So yeah, I, I would say that the general theme was, uh, was blockchains. Yeah, so in your blog post, you talk a little bit about, you know, you tried to promote Decred at, at one of these meetups at first, you brought a banner and the, the uh, meetup organizers were not cool with that. But a method that you found that did work was just wearing a Decred shirt. And that actually helps spark a lot of conversations with, you know, these people and it allows you to dive into these deeper conversations. Do you want to kind of talk about some of the things you learned on how, how to get people talking about Decred at these meetups? Definitely. Um, so one of the things that um, that happen naturally is if you are wearing your your decred shirt people will recognize you they're like, they're like uh, hey decred that's uh, that's a blockchain product right you're on coin market cap and then uh, they, they ask you like oh so so what's it about I, I saw it but, but I didn't really look into it you know and then you start explaining so basically you I, I, I mostly start with with Bitcoin and um, uh, most people agree that Bitcoin has some has some problems because of the centralization of the power in the hands of miners, and that there is a small group of core developers that uh, that basically dictate what happens to the to the currency, and uh, they always uh, agree on it. And then I and I explain a little bit how Decred aims to solve this uh, this 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 problem by creating a a layer of of governance on top of the of, on top of the blockchain. So that when the miners mine on block, and there are five stakeholders who verify if they use the right uh, the right consensus rules, and they're like, "Whoa, that's so awesome! Can you tell me more?" And then I start explaining about the ticket system and how everything works. And yeah, by the time they uh, <laughs> they leave the conversation, they are mind blown. And uh, yeah, it, it is it is really awesome to uh, to talk to people. And I I actually met a few guys who were already holding some some decred. So uh, a few of them already knew about the project and they were holding some. So it was also awesome. And uh, <laughs> what was actually also funny that uh, I had to tell most of them that you could stake your coins. So they were holding Decred, but they had no idea they could uh, <laughs> they could participate in the in the proof of stake system and actually get a reward on their uh, on their coins. So that that was also good to to inform people about that opportunity. Um, so you also recently gave a talk about Decred at a meetup. And so one thing I wanted to ask you is how did this come about? You know, like if somebody wanted to give a talk about Decred at their own local meetup, what process would they go through in order to do that? Well, one of the most important things is to get to know the organizers that are uh, behind uh, the blockchain meetups in your, uh, in your local area. Um, so if you know um, the organizers of the of the meetup and um, you introduce um, your ideas to them and you you show them that you are knowledgeable that you have uh, something to say, uh, they are generally very interested because in fact it is pretty hard to find decent speakers who do not shill their ICO or who do not try to uh, persuade the audience to to buy into Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever. So if you actually have a topic um, that interests people, um, it's uh, you, you are mostly very welcome to, to speak about it. So um, the topic that I chose for my talk was blockchain governance and how different uh, blockchains implemented uh, yeah, a, a governance system in their, uh, in their currency. So one last question. Your, your blog post is called The Truth About Blockchain Meetups. What is the truth about blockchain meetups? Well, uh, the truth about blockchain meetups, they are awesome. And um, what, what makes them awesome are mostly the, the people that come to them. I've uh, experienced a very positive, very, uh, yeah, very strong uh, uh, hype that is created around blockchain these days. But the people who come to the to the blockchain meetups are, are, are really positive people and uh, people like you and me who really uh, want to know what is going on, who, who have questions, and um, yeah, it's it's great to interact with them and to uh, to learn more and uh, exchange ideas, and uh, I, I think that's what it's all about. You know, we we are uh, we are a digital currency, and um, we only exist because the the community. Uh, uh, holds holds its value. So we together create the currency. And I think what is awesome is that 
you take new ideas from different projects and you integrate it into your uh, your currency and, and you can grow and you can develop the only way to do that is to go out and, and meet new people and, uh, and get new ideas on board so that that's why absolutely are, uh, that's why blockchain meetups are a great place to uh, to to go to even if you're a beginner uh, if you have uh, more questions than answers definitely go there because there are uh, you can you can learn a lot so yeah absolutely all right thanks for coming on the show noah if you want to noah is a, a decred community coordinator if you want to reach out to him on slack his username is Hayon h-a-o-n um, and feel free to send him a dm and thanks again thank you bye bye so the last segment of the show is a roundtable discussion all about grassroots marketing <laughs> okay, welcome to this week's roundtable discussion. Um, this week, the topic is grassroots marketing. So what Decred is currently doing in this arena and then what we can do to improve our grassroots marketing efforts. So joining us, we have Scott, Slack username Desereth. Scott is a Decred community contributor. Then we have uh, Noah, who is a Decred contractor. He is a community coordinator. Uh, Slack username Hayon, H-A-O-N. And then we have Clarissa. Um, Slack username Bab, and Clarissa is a marketing and sales contractor for Decred. So Clarissa, this is your first time on the show. Did you want to uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. So um, my name is Clarissa Pierboom, and um, I have been doing marketing for the better part of 22 years um, in different industries, um, worked with banks and student loan companies, and so I've basically worked my way up to the top in marketing and used to be a sales director for um, a really large bank and um, <laughs> was recently just a photographer and um, kind of got back into marketing um, because of Decred, got really super excited about it and um, started marketing for Decred. <laughs> You, you basically joined over from the dark side to the <laughs> to the rebellion. <laughs> yes, yes, basically. Basically, I worked for the 600-pound gorilla, and now I'm working for the little guy. So yeah. I'm excited about it. <laughs> Very nice. So why don't we start off with just describing what is grassroots marketing? What are some of the you know efforts that fall under this category? Basically, grassroots marketing is where you have a hyper focus on a certain group or a specific group that you are trying to, um, I guess, uh, went over to your side and promote to. And so you basically pick out this little niche and you promote specifically to them in the hopes that they will go ahead and expand and get out word of mouth notice about your product or brand or whatever it is that you're trying to promote. And there's a bunch of different little strategies that are used for grass marketing. Um, it just depends on what industry you're in and what your product is and so forth that you use. And so this is one of the areas that you're currently focusing on for Decred, is that correct? That is correct. So right now I'm doing um, grassroots marketing here in the Austin area um, in Texas, and then we will be expanding out from there. And so we're using a few... Um, a few promotions and so forth. We recently had the Politea launch party for the contest, for the Politea contest. And so um, that was a grassroots marketing strategy um, in order to cause some buzz and get some, get the word out, so to speak, about Decred um, and what we're doing here. And so um, some of the other stuff we're doing in Austin is we're going to be creating, um, right now we just go to the large general meetups. And so we're gonna be creating our own meetup. And then um, we'll be creating um, a five-man team here in Austin. And then we hope to spread that out. Great, so D Austin is getting a Decred meetup. That's exciting. <laughs> yes, yes, very exciting. And we're currently assisting so other cities that have meetups as well. Um, so we're helping to start the New York one as well. And then we're going to assist in starting one in California. Awesome. Great. And so this is something that we've been talking about throughout the show. Um, if somebody wants to start a Decred meetup in their area, what should they do? What steps should they go through? 
so they can contact me on Slack or they can contact um, anyone in Slack for that matter and say, hey, this is how I want to help. Um, I either have a place that I can donate or I have some ideas in order to do a meetup. Um, and if they can just get a hold of um, myself or anyone in Decred and say what exactly it is they're trying to do, then we can actually help them and give them strategies to plan their events, to plan their meetups, and we can also assist them in coordinating, um, I guess, speakers, um, developers, um, anyone that they need in order to get those meetups started. Awesome. So once again, her Slack username is Bab, B-A-B. So if you have questions about you know, starting your own meetup in your local area, feel free to reach out to her. Um, and then uh, Noah, you're also working on some you know, grassroots marketing efforts over in Europe yourself. What are you doing over in Europe? Yeah, so I live in the Netherlands and uh, the Netherlands is a quite active country in the um, yeah, technology space. So we have a lot of people interested in, in blockchains these days. Uh, so all over the Netherlands, they are organizing meetups and um, and presentations about Bitcoin and about uh, and blockchain technology. Unfortunately, also a lot of ICO events. So I, I try to avoid those and and stay uh, stay more focused on the on the blockchain events. Um, but what we are uh, we are currently doing uh, here in the Netherlands is um, we we have a few community members who are uh, who are based in the Netherlands. And uh, what I would like is to uh, to start uh, visiting these meetups regularly and uh, and and gather a, a group of people who would be interested to uh, to have a, a Decred meetup, just as in Austin uh, will be happening. So I'm hoping to organize one either in Amsterdam or in in Utrecht in the yeah, somewhere in 2018, maybe aiming in the in the summer. So that, that would be really awesome to have uh, have a official Decred meetup in the in the Netherlands as well. And uh, Clarissa, so what do you have planned for the future? Since this you're really focusing on this, you know, what do you have planned for the future, and what do you need from the community? Um, so right now, um, what I am planning is um, basically to start up in the Austin area and um, expand out from there in Texas. Um, if there is anyone who uh, wants to take on the challenge of creating a meetup or um, just going out and representing Decred at meetups in different cities here in the U.S., um, please contact me on BAB on Slack or um, I'm also, I have uh, some business cards and so forth that I hand out. So if you see me in person, if you're in the Austin area, um, come ask me for that and we'll We'll get together and and uh, create a strategy. So if we want to make you know these grassroots marketing efforts, we're starting in Austin, we're starting in these other locations, and we're starting small, but we want to expand them to the global level, right? So what kind of things, tools, processes will need will need to be put in place for that to actually happen? You know, I can see us coming up with an actual you know meetup kit where if you want to create a meetup in your area. We have all the resources available for you. These are different topics that you can have for different um, you know, meetup weeks and things like that. Do you Have you guys thought about this at all or what we can do to you know, make this process scalable? We have actually, and um, it was supposed to be one of my surprises, Luke. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. I blew it, I blew uh, it. So one of the things we're doing is um, we're trying to compile a list of items um, to enter in for a kit um, that can be given out to these folks who have who want to take on the challenge of creating meetups. And so um, inside the kits, it's going to be certain thing with like, here's a set schedule that you'll do at your meetup when you first do your intro. Um, here are some uh, ideal pieces of swag and product for Decred that you can give out to you know, uh, as door prizes or to people who are really interested and ask more questions um, so that you get a lot of um, involvement. Um, and so um, we're also working um, to not just to create the kits, but to create strategies for our meetups so that they're done in a way that, you know, it's not just, hey, come and talk decred in the crowd, but actually give ideas um, 
make action plans and create goals for your specific area. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, one one thing that one thing that I had a question about is that um, we've seen some guys from Africa. There, I think there were two guys who were living in Ghana and one guy in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, what was a big question is how can we support those communities in 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 uh, starting up for example, a Decred network in, in those areas where there is very few people who, who actually know about cryptocurrencies. Um, there are strategies that I have given some of those folks in order to do things with less money because yeah. um, some people consider Decred a startup even though we started in 2016 and did the code way back before that, um, but they still consider us a startup. And so a lot of startups have to do things with less money and so yeah. there are strategies that i give um, and that i have given to some folks who say hey i want to start a meetup um, and then i go from there and give them strategies about how to get a location how to get it nice. for free how to get someone to donate and so forth but um they're pretty long and intensive and so yeah. and they don't always work for everyone and it depends on what area you're in and so if someone is very serious about it and they're not just looking for a handout, then um, I actually do assist them in creating strategies for specifically their area and how to get started without any money and without having to send any money to them. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the truth is grassroots so, marketing. It's, it's supposed to be possible, you know, not with without a ton of money behind it. And that's that's kind yeah. of the thing, you know. You just yeah. get word out and you, you get that's word true. of mouth going. And so, I mean, you can start you can start just with talking to a few friends and then, you know, finding, you know, an interested, interested group and just, you know, forming these meetups and, you know, following along with Decred News and, you know, just finding like-minded enthusiasts to discuss, you know, cryptocurrencies with. So Absolutely. So because they can, they can actually be done at someone's home. Mm -hmm. They can be done at just a regular restaurant, um, you know, outside in the patio area where it's nice and quiet. What we're trying to avoid is just giving handouts to people who just want to throw a party at Decred's expense. And so we have to be really careful about, um, you know, who is going to represent Decred as well as, you know, how we're going to be perceived out in those areas. Right. Because as soon as somebody's putting on a Decred meetup, you know, they're now representing Decred. And so there's going to have to be some uh, type of vetting process or, or something like that. So one question I did have is how are we measuring the success of these marketing campaigns? You know, I personally like to quantify, you know, as much things, as many things as possible. So you can, you know, get the numbers and make decisions based off those numbers. So do we have any metrics that we're tracking to uh, gauge success of these different marketing efforts? So one of the things that we're doing here in Austin is we are tracking um, not just attendance numbers, which is a, a goal for us to increase our numbers um, and increase the people who know about Decred, but to also um, track um, how it relates to either someone investing or um, really getting involved in Decred. So um, one of the things that I, I like to track is how many people I can actually get on to Slack or Matrix or any of our channels um, or GitHub and see who I can get to uh, really get involved in Decred. Um, and I'm the one that holds those numbers. But as far as Decred, um, we are actually looking into, you know, how many more investors we get, how many more people are buying coins, how many more people are um, coming into our areas and so forth. So um, for us right now in Austin, it's tracking uh, attendance mainly. Mm -hmm. uh, Noah or uh, Desiree, did you want to talk about the social media metrics that we track and how those have been, um, what kind of growth we've seen recently? Okay. Well, I, I help contribute with the, uh, the Facebook page. And Facebook conveniently has all those metrics for you. So it's, it's fairly uh, easy to track. But for anyone that's really interested in grassroots marketing there's there's a lot of like social media platforms that we don't really have a presence on so just like by getting on there and you know participating you can you'll, you'll be able to see firsthand like the community growing absolutely no did you have anything you wanted to add to that yeah um, uh, what I think is is um, is going to be 
more and more effective is to to organize contests where you where you have people sending in, for example, a photo. We did that one time from the official Decred Twitter account. We had the living large contest. So you would make a picture of yourself uh, with the hashtag Decred and living large or something like that. <laughs> And it was a huge success, people posting pictures of themselves or, or some sort of decred sign that they made in the sand or um, any any kinds of stuff, people wearing decred shirts. And I think those things were uh, were really awesome to see that you um, you submit something and uh, yeah, your submission is, is a, uh, yeah, part of a contest and you actually have a chance to, to win some uh, coins or a t-shirt or, uh, or stickers, whatever uh, whatever is possible. Mm -hmm. So those kind of contests, uh, running them from from Facebook or Twitter, I think that would be an awesome idea to engage people and and get the word out more. Because if they if they retweet that contest, people in their network will will see it. So those kind of uh, of contests on social media, I think, are a great way to uh, yeah to do some grassroots marketing as well. Yeah, and I believe um, one of the Decred community members is running a giveaway for the Brazilian community right now. So I, depending on the success of that, um, I think that's something that we could scale up to a much broader audience in the near future. Um, but OK, so I think that's all the time we have. Did you? Get, thanks for joining us, everyone. Did anybody want to have anything else they wanted to add or tell the community that's listening? No, just get in touch with one of us if you're interested in um getting involved and helping us get the word out about Decred. Yeah. And, and everybody's contact information will be in the, the show description. So just look for, um, you can find it there. Yeah. Well, um, my, my, uh, my story to share uh, with, with the community of Decred is really, yeah, talk to your friends, talk to those around you who are, who are interested in, in blockchains. For example, at my workplace, I got a few colleagues who were who interested in blockchains. So I pitched Decred to them and, and a few of them actually bought a few coins. So those things you can really do to, uh, yeah, in, in your personal network as well. Just talk to people and, and if you see that they are interested in, in, in blockchains, just, uh, yeah, just mention Decred. It's a, it's a small thing you can do, and it, and it really helps a lot. Yeah, and, and uh, I guess my uh, closing thoughts are, I, I just want to let everyone know that, you know, I started as a, like, as an enthusiast, a fan, you know, kind of a lurker in the beginning, but anyone, you know, can get involved and make a difference, you know? So if, if you're really enthusiastic about Decred and you want to get involved, just do it. Just go for it and start helping out. Yeah. All right, well, we'll end it there. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time. Uh, uh, Don't forget to subscribe to the Decred YouTube channel. If you want to check us out on social media, our Twitter handle is at Decred Project. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Decred Project, on Reddit at rdecred, or come chat with us using our Slack replacement, which is Riot Chat. You can find a link in the show description to sign up. Until next time. Self-funded and managed by the stakeholders. The funds come from 10% of every block reward. So tell them other cryptocurrencies to lock the doors. With all the drama, sometimes it's like the game broken. That's why the cred measures up for such a great token. The first crypto with binding on chain voting. And that's music to my ears like Beethoven. Make sure you do your own research for the info. And welcome to the best community in crypto.